This is Legal Nurse Podcast, the first ever podcast specifically for legal nurse consultants. You'll learn tips, tricks, and strategies that you can use in your LNC career. If you'd love to hold a book in your hands that you helped to write, be sure to pay attention to the information that I share with you during this show. Welcome to Close Up Radio, where our hosts, Doug Llewellyn and Jim Masters, engage today's top thinkers from around the world to bring you information, inspiration, and thought-provoking ideas you can put to use in your personal and professional life right now. Covering a broad range of topics, Close Up Radio digs deep to discover what makes today's top thinkers tick. Close Up Radio, where ideas matter. And now, here's today's host, Jim Masters. Thanks very much for joining us, everybody. A real pleasure to have you here. We're live worldwide on Close Up Radio Live. This is your host, Jim Masters. Very excited to welcome Pat Iyer of Legal Nurse Business. You know, in a time marked by rapid change that is rapidly expanding and transforming the healthcare sector, Legal Nurse Business is a beacon of leadership and transformation spearheaded by its visionary founder and CEO, Pat Iyer. Over her 30-year-plus illustrious career, Pat's notable achievements as a legal nurse consultant have established her as an accomplished business leader with a mission to assist entrepreneurs in navigating the challenges of breaking into the business, avoiding the pitfalls along the way, and helping legal nurse consultants achieve exceptional results. As a seasoned business coach, educator, and author of 69 books, including How to Analyze Medical Records, a primer for legal nurse consultants, How to Be a Successful Expert Witness, and Writing Handbook for LNCS, Pat has demonstrated her expertise in the legal nurse consulting industry. Legal nurse consultants, registered nurses who part with, they really partner with attorneys on medical-related cases, spend much of their time educating attorneys, thus bridging the gap between medicine and law. Therefore, they are exceptionally qualified to put medical terminology and the complexities within the healthcare system into an easy-to-understand terminology for the judge and the jury. Legal nurse consulting is evidently a high-stakes field, he emphasizes, but one that is gratifying, exciting, and unequivocally rewarding. Today, Pat is primarily focused on continuing to educate legal nurse consultants, writing her popular blog, business coaching, and creating much-needed courses on legal nurse consulting. Joining us today from New Jersey, my pleasure to welcome to Close Up Radio Live, Pat Iyer. A pleasure to have her here today. Pat, welcome to Close Up Radio Live. We appreciate you joining us on the show today. Well, thank you, Jim. This is a, a an exciting field that I've been dedicated to for years, and yet for many people, they have absolutely no idea what we do. Right. So in the time we have allotted, we're going to try our darndest to uh, explain it, and you're very good at doing it in layman's terms, which I think is wonderful. Uh, you do it for judges and juries, and now can do it for our faithful listeners listening around the world as well. Tell us a little bit about your earlier background and some of the things that inspired you to even want to go into the healthcare field and into to nursing and what led you on that path to doing what you do and more importantly doing what you love well thank you Jim if we think back to the 1960s when I was in high school it may be inconceivable to some of our listeners but the only choices available to women at that time were nurse, teacher, secretary, or librarian. And I chose nursing as a a field because I enjoyed the concept of helping people. I also found that I liked writing, and I was encouraged Mm -hmm. by my high school teacher, English teacher, who saw promise in me. So I went to a diploma program for three years and then went on for another three years to get a bachelor's in nursing. I worked as a nurse in a hospital for five years and then went back and got a master's degree in nursing. And that led me into 
the idea of beginning to write books using those writing talents that I had. I teamed up with a couple of other people. We co-authored our first book. That led to me being able to approach attorneys and offer my services as an expert witness to testify in nursing malpractice cases. And that led to establishing a very large and successful business supplying other expert witnesses, training them, and working on fields, uh, on cases behind the scenes for attorneys who are handling either personal injury or medical malpractice or products liability cases or um, toxic tort cases, which is when there's environmental contamination usually from industries or dumping of chemicals into the water, a variety of cases where there's medical records. That's when nurses can step in and help attorneys make sense of all of that medical terminology. Fascinating work. I've had an opportunity to interview several expert witnesses on our radio series and then also post up television, the television video interview series we do as well and have traveled the country in that vein. And it's extraordinary. I really appreciate when people take the expertise that they have in the field of endeavor, and because they have that expertise and the understanding, really, of the ins and outs of that particular work that they do, they're able to then lend that expertise situations where an expert witness would be called in to sort of disseminate and make sense of what's going on and that's what you're doing with your – how do you define the work of a certified legal nurse consultant? Well, a legal nurse consultant is a person who has gone through some kind of training to take them from their clinical skills as a registered nurse to understanding the legal system to be able to assist attorneys. When you have – earned the right to sit for the certification exam after 2,000 hours of work within a five-year period, then you can take a certification exam. There's only one approved certification exam in the country, which is offered through the American Association of Legal Nurse Consultants. There are other programs that offer certificates, but they are not the equivalent of a certification that meets standards that have been set by the American Board of Nursing Specialties. So that legal nurse consultant is the bridge. If you imagine, Jim, one of your parents is in a car crash and there's a lot of injuries and therefore a lot of medical records, the legal nurse consultant sits with the attorney and says, here's what happened, here are the injuries, here are the complications. This is what you can expect to see as this person is recovering. If this case goes to settlement, here are the strong points in the case, here are the weak points. And if it goes to trial, the legal nurse consultant can help the attorney get medical records together, help to create some exhibits that would explain to the jury what the injuries were. In other words, that legal nurse consultant is educating the attorney making the attorney's job easier, who is faced with a mountain of electronic medical records that are filled with terms and abbreviations and details, the nurse can digest all of that to make it much more understandable. Really breaking it out and breaking it down, which I think is really terrific because, again, you know, it can be, quite involving and very emotional during these times when there is a Mm -hmm. case uh, of sorts. Why do attorneys, from your perspective, need legal nurse consultants as well? Well, they need that person who can translate because medical terminology is dense. In some fields, it's incredibly dense and difficult to understand. So when the nurse helps the attorney understand those concepts, it makes the attorney's job so much easier. One of my clients and I were looking at an anesthesia record 
and we were commenting on one little diagram on the left-hand side of the anesthesia record that was designed to indicate what position the patient's body was on the operating room table. And he said, Pat, these medical records are so detailed and every single thing means something. And I, I had to laugh and I said, yes, it does. And that's why a legal nurse consultant can translate that for you because you know, we've been staring at this record for several minutes, and then I pointed this out, and he was just so simultaneously frustrated and grateful that we had spotted this, this particular piece, which was important for the case that we were working on. That's so important. Yeah, it really is something that uh, I think people don't even realize is work that goes on behind the scenes. Let's talk about also um, what does it take to become a legal nurse consultant? There's definitely an education piece which a nurse can obtain by going to a community college or taking a course online, reading a textbook, there's a foundation of knowledge that goes into the field, certainly understanding legal concepts and the demands of the role. But more importantly, there are qualities. To be detail-oriented is critical. I had a nurse who worked with me for a short time who realized that she wasn't detail-oriented when I taught her how to organize medical records she was so frustrated because she couldn't focus on the page closely enough to be able to understand what she was looking at. And she realized she ended up resigning. I'm sure, Jim, you've had <clears throat> people you've worked with that you wanted to fire and you hoped that they would resign so you wouldn't have to go through that process. And she and I came to that agreement at the same time that this was not something she was cut out for. You have to be able to be able to focus on the small details because one word in a medical record can change the entire case and you've got to be able to spot that as a legal nurse consultant. Writing skills are critical. Attorneys are taught to dissect sentences word by word and if a legal nurse consultant cannot write well, cannot correct typos, cannot organize their thoughts well, it's of no value to an attorney. And they also have to have good communication skills. We are used to, as nurses, talking to patients, explaining things in simple terms to them, being able to walk into a patient's room in a hospital and within a few seconds establish a rapport, convince that patient we're skilled, we have the knowledge to take care of them, connect with them. Those same skills are very helpful when you work with an attorney because the attorneys have all different personalities and levels of knowledge and anxieties regarding their cases. They need the reassuring presence of a nurse who will help them understand these medical details and do it effectively. Key to it all, paramount. Um, the extraordinary work coaching as well. Tell us about your coaching work, which I know is near and dear to your heart. Before we continue, let me ask you a question. Would you like to have attorneys think of you first when they have a case? I'm Pat Iyer, the editor of the next volume of Medical Record Analysis. This is a compilation book made up of chapters written by LNCs like you. Join us by contributing a chapter to the next volume of Medical Record Analysis. Here are seven things you'll gain. You'll become more visible and more easily found by attorneys and other LNCs. You'll gain time. If you thought about writing a book, guess what? This project involves writing only one chapter using a simple process that speeds up the time commitment the visibility you gain can lead to more cases and income as attorneys read your chapter and think of you first. 
You don't have to figure out the process of writing a chapter. I will guide you through it and give you a simple formula to follow. You will get a sense of security. I've been an editor for a dozen or more books with chapters contributed by nurses. No other LNC has written as much or helped as many nurses become published authors. You'll have fun. We'll have a workshop to develop your marketing images and you'll enjoy the virtual book launch when you meet the other authors. Who knows what collaborations can develop? Your perspective will widen. Listen to what nurse attorney Arlene Klopatsky had to say about how participating in writing chapters stimulated her ideas on writing. Um, I wrote in uh, both um, editions of the book. It was really great experience. I hadn't really written anything um, since I wrote with Pat in 2001 and two for the AALNC um, Principles and Practices book. So it was fun to get back into it. It was painless. It was very inspiring. So I wrote the first time, wrote a chapter on records beyond the medical record that you would need for cases. And then I wrote uh, the last time on vetting expert witnesses, all of the things that an LNC can do to uh, challenge the other side's experts. And it was just so much fun. And um, because of writing those things, I um, was asked to, with Marianne Cosby, revise the uh, Emergency Nurses Association core curriculum, the chapter on legal aspects. So um, we just completed that. And then then some additional work uh, writing assignments have come my way. And that's all in preparation for uh, hopefully writing my own book on uh, tips for LNCs um, from the legal standpoint, from the, the attorney standpoint. So I highly recommend it. It was a wonderful experience. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Arlene. Uh, I love how one project leads to another project, which leads to another project and snowballs. Does. Jump in and join us. Go to this link, lnc.tips forward slash MRA3 and choose the single or two pay button. I'll send you access to a self-paced course I created to help you write your chapter. And I'll meet with you to get you started. The link again is lnc.tips forward slash MRA3. I can't wait to see what you write about. And now let's return to the show. I enjoy helping legal nurse consultants move from that state of having just finished their legal nurse consulting program to learning how to function as business people. There's nothing in nursing school that teaches you how to run a business, just like there's nothing in law school that teaches an attorney how to set up a practice. There's a lot of um, firsthand experience trial and error, uh, the school of hard knocks that many of us graduated from. To have me as a business coach means that I can help people shortcut that process and say, here's what I have found is effective, particularly when it comes to marketing. There are many attorneys who've never heard of legal nurse consultants or they think, oh, you're a nurse, that means you must be a paralegal. Well, no, there are paralegals who have specific training in how to write briefs and get medical records and do case investigations, use uh, databases to get information about old cases. That's not part of what a legal nurse consultant does, but the legal nurse consultant is skilled in the medical pieces. So part of what I do in my coaching program is provide the business training that helps nurses use everything that they learned about legal nurse consulting and put it into place and then also have a place to go if they run into a trouble and they've got questions about something that comes up they have a safe place in which they can describe their dilemma and we can as part of the coaching program work through what they need to know in order to resolve that 
which is so important. It really, really is. So the work of an expert witness, I mentioned a little of um, that sort of in the beginning. How do you really define this work, the work of an expert witness? Well, there are two broad types of legal nurse consultants, people who work behind the scenes, who will never be testifying in a courtroom, and then expert witnesses who are legal nurse consultants. They are typically as expert witnesses in one of two roles. They could be a liability expert, as I was for 20 years testifying about whether the nurse followed the standards of care and provided the care that was required. Plaintiff attorneys hire them to do that. Defense attorneys hire them to do that. And then there's another expert role, which is explaining the medical records to the jury to help them understand what the person went through. That's called um, expert fact witness or also a Rule 1006 expert. There are federal rules of evidence in the United States that permit in all federal cases and 48 out of 50 states the ability of somebody to come into the courtroom and explain complicated facts to the jury to provide them with a summary. I did that role for 25 years and have a few more cases that are still unresolved that are coming up for trial. So there's behind the scenes legal nurse consultants, expert witness legal nurse consultants, and the expert witnesses are broken down into liability experts and then Rule 1006 experts. Those are the primary roles that nurses serve as legal nurse consultants and experts. You're a business owner. You own the business. What are some of the things about owning a business that you enjoy, and why would you recommend owning your own business? About 5% of the world are entrepreneurs. I think the United States has a higher proportion of entrepreneurs than in some parts of the world. You know, there's nothing like it for a person who wants to be in charge of their destiny. And that's not a pie-in-the-sky concept. That's There are pluses and minuses of being in charge of your destiny and being in control of your life. For many people, having a steady paycheck and benefits is critical. And I don't diminish that. I've had many points in my life that I've had a steady paycheck and benefits. And those are nice, especially when somebody else is paying me and I've got paid vacation time. But when you are an entrepreneurial personality, as most most of us are in this field, we like being able to establish the guidelines for our business. If I see something in my business that needs to change, I can immediately put it in action. When I was in nursing administration for seven years in charge of staff development for a nursing department of a large hospital, I had to go through a committee. My boss had to put it in the budget. Then the budget had to be discussed and decided by the accounting department. And then they would approve or not approve whatever it was that I was asking for as chair of the Department of Nursing Education. I can do that in 10 minutes in my business. And that is very satisfying to know that you can create new things, that you've got the freedom to do it, that you can determine when you want to work. Um, There's also, Jim, however, nobody at the end of the day who says, you should go home now, you've put in enough hours. There's a little negative aspect to being your own boss is that um, work can stretch to fit the time that's available, and there's always something to do. It's always, yeah, it's um, it's ongoing, absolutely. So something to definitely consider when owning your own business as well. In terms of being a legal nurse consultant, what would you say are some of the benefits of becoming 
a legal nurse consultant. It's an exciting field. It's gratifying. You have the opportunity to experience those freedoms of being an entrepreneur that I just described. You have the ability to make a difference. If you're working on a case, you know, I'll give you an example of a man who developed pain in his leg at the end of his hospital admission, and he told the nurse about his leg being painful, he had trouble walking, and she dismissed him. The resident gave a discharge order over the telephone, didn't see this gentleman. The patient went home. He had a clot in his leg that traveled up to his lung, and he was dead six hours after he got home. His attorney, who was his uncle, took this case and saw it all the way through, and as part of the settlement of this case, the attorney required that the residents at this particular large teaching hospital every year when they turned over, they had to learn about this case. That was mandated as part of the settlement. They had to come and physically look at a patient before the patient went home. So for years, and I don't know if it continues today because I've lost touch with the attorney, but for years we knew that working on that case together, we were influencing the care for other patients who would have no idea why they were being physically seen by a resident. It was the ability to change the course of care that is so exciting Yes, the plaintiff is interested in compensation. The plaintiff attorney is interested in compensation. But a lot of plaintiffs don't want this to happen to somebody else. They want to change the system. And this case is an example of being able to improve the quality of care. Which is so important, the bottom line, improving quality of care. You also do courses, too. Tell us about some of your courses and things that you think make them unique. I use my knowledge from having been in this field for over 30 years to identify what legal nurse consultants need. I teach about marketing. It's fine to talk about marketing in a broad sense, and you and I can find thousands of websites that provide information about marketing, but tailoring it to working in this particular field is what I do in my courses that I teach. I just finished teaching a course on being an expert witness, specifically for nurses who are interested in being experts or improving their skills. Back in uh, July 2020, my partner and I did our first virtual conference for legal nurse consultants. Twice a year now, we are offering virtual conferences specifically for legal nurse consultants. So what I have the skill and experience in doing is taking broad concepts and modifying them for a specific audience. Our next conference coming up in September is going to be September 26th and 27th, and that will be a two-day event with just chock full of information for marketing, uh, developing exhibits with attorneys for trial, understanding the impact of these cases, how we can most effectively help attorneys. And I'll give that link to you, Jim, by the way, as, since we're talking about this, for listeners who are interested in signing up for that, that's lnc.tips forward slash September 2024 virtual. That's lnc.tips forward slash September 2024 virtual. And the second part of that has no spaces between September 2024 virtual, lnc.tips forward slash September 2024 virtual. That's terrific. Thanks for sharing that. 
maybe you can describe as well some of your books too. What inspired you to write 67 books? That English teacher, again, you know, it's so important for people to be encouraged. There's some people with who unfortunately have gotten negative messages from their teachers. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was working with some people in a mastermind, and we created a book for individuals interested in starting up businesses. And all of us together worked to, to promote this book, and we became Amazon number one bestsellers in several categories within several hours. One of our co-authors is in Australia, and by the time he woke up, we in the North, um, uh, in the, the United States and England, we had made this already a bestseller. So he woke up to the news that he was an Amazon number one bestseller, and he said, my English teacher told me that I would never amount to anything, and I had terrible writing skills. I would love for her to know that I'm an Amazon number one bestseller. So I got encouraged. Um, like him, I got strong, positive messages. I enjoy the creative process. And again, sharing information, life lessons that I've learned in my business. I would love for people to shortcut that and be able to go to a resource that's specific to legal nurse consulting. So I keep producing books and I enjoy that process. That's fantastic. That's a lot of books and a lot of writing and a lot of thought going into all of it. Um, we only have about a minute or so left. Hopefully we'll be able to have you back and expand some more. Do you, um, is there maybe a case that you have consulted on that you could briefly describe as an example? Yeah, I was working with an attorney early on in my business involving a young baby who received an overdose of potassium chloride when he was in the neonatal intensive care unit. Potassium chloride is a an electrolyte. It's one of the two drugs that is used for lethal injections when patient when Criminals are executed in our country. They get potassium chloride and phenobarbital. And so it's a very potent, dangerous drug. And the nurse gave an accidental overdose on that to that child who became a um, paralyzed from his neck down as a result of this overdose. The attorney settled that case against the nurse and just as the insurance company had written out the check, this boy who was seven years old was at home. The legal, the uh, licensed practical nurse was taking care of him. She didn't realize that this child had developed a, a growth inside his neck where there was a hole for a tracheostomy, and his neck opening got closed, and he started gasping for breath. Instead of calling 911, she called the father and told him that his son was having trouble breathing. The father drove home. By the time the father got there, the child had stopped breathing and was dead, and they transported him to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The attorney filed another malpractice claim against the home health nurse and the agency, and he settled that case. It's the only one that I've worked on where there were two malpractice cases involving the same person, and they were both successfully settled. So that one stands out because of the way that I was able to help the attorney and assist him every step of the way until he got those two cases resolved. That's amazing. That's extraordinary. really, really is. I encourage folks to go to the website, LegalNurseBusiness.com. That's LegalNurseBusiness.com to connect with Pat and learn more about the opportunities and the extraordinary work that she does and possible opportunities for you to connect with her and take advantage of the wonderful consulting and coaching services that she provides. Pat, thanks for joining us on the show. This went by in a New York minute, as I always say, but hopefully <laughs> we'll get a chance yes. to 
expand more and hear some more of the work in action. Thanks so much for joining us on Post Up Radio Live for this episode, and hope you enjoyed the time with me as much as I have with you today. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate that. You're very welcome. Pat Iyer of Legal Nurse Business joining us here on the program. Go to LegalNurseBusiness.com to learn more. Jim Masters here thanking you for your time this time till next time. Also inviting you to stay right there. We'll be back in just a few moments with another extraordinary guest celebrated from around the world here on Close Up Radio Live. Till then, for all of us, do have a great day. Thanks for listening, and bye for now. You have been listening to a broadcast from Close Up Radio, a division of Close Up Television Incorporated. For more information about our show and to be considered for future broadcasts, please visit CloseUpTelevision.com. You may also learn about us on social media and listen to us on podcast and Internet radio. Thank you for joining us, and we hope that you have an empowered and productive day. Coming up next, you'll have an opportunity to meet an attorney who is involved in the Social Security Disability System in the appeals process. Adriana De La Torre has experience as an attorney since 2006, and she uses that opportunity and that experience to take you behind the walls of the Social Security Disability System and to understand how you as a legal nurse consultant have a place within the system. Adriana, tell our listener a little bit about the topics that we covered in your podcast. So we talked about how Social Security is complex and interesting. So we talked about the different levels of administrative review. And we talked about how once you finish there, you have to go to federal court, which is where I come in. We talked about how legal nurse consultants can help claimants and attorneys alike in the process. And we talked about a space specifically for legal nurse consultants to work on disability cases. There's a lot of fascinating insights in this program coming up next on Legal Nurse Podcast. Be sure that you click on down below or return to us next week for a new episode and for meeting Adriana and finding out more about the Social Security Disability System It certainly is a lifeline, but it is not a given that you automatically receive it the first time that you apply for it. And she'll explain why in her podcast coming up next. That's all for today. Be sure to check out this opportunity that I'm offering for a limited period. You'll have a chance to be part of a team of LNCs who are working together and sharing their wisdom by writing chapters for my next compilation book. Go to lnc.tips forward slash MRA3. That's lnc.tips forward slash MRA3.